Welcome to our video on the use of artificial intelligence in ministry. In this video, we'll explore how AI can be used in our mission to serve the church. We'll also discuss some ethical considerations and challenges that come with using AI in this context. My name is John Edmiston, and I'm a partner here at Triumph Tech. Our passion is to help ministries grow and flourish in the area of digital ministry. If you're interested in learning more about Triumph Tech, we'll discuss that at the end of the video. Artificial intelligence is a rapidly growing field that is transforming industries and changing the way we live and work. AI has the power to analyze and interpret large amounts of data faster and more accurately than humans, making it a valuable tool for a wide range of applications. Despite its many benefits, an increasing reliance on AI raises several moral and ethical considerations. This is certainly the case when evaluating the use of AI in ministry. Perhaps the largest apprehension is how the technology will replace human interactions. There's also the potential for AI to be used to spread misinformation and manipulate theological beliefs. Additionally, there's the issue of bias within AI, as algorithms used to power these technologies reflect and amplify the biases of their creators, most of which do not share the same biblical worldview as many in the church. While AI can be used in numerous ways, we'll focus on the ability to generate text using a technology called GPT-3. GPT is a technology developed by OpenAI that helps generate human-like text from simple prompts. The technology was trained on the dataset that was harvested from over 60 million websites, as well as the entire Wikipedia database and thousands of books that are contained online. Getting started with GPT-3 is super easy. Just head over to the OpenAI website and create a free chat account. Once your account is created, you'll see a screen like this. Simply add your request, called a prompt, at the bottom and press the button and it will respond to whatever you've asked. The most important part of using this type of AI is the creation of your prompts. Let's take a quick look at some examples of how you can use ChatGPT and the prompts you'll need to write. In our first example, we're asking it to write a five-sentence promotion, encouraging a mother to register a child for a church's summer camp. On the right-hand side, we can actually see the results that it provided. Now note here, it, it actually, without any additional context, has provided a list of activities that might be seen as a church's summer camp. And you might want to go in there and refine that to meet your specific camp. But also note that it's found different things that you might want to uh, put into your promotion to encourage someone to register quickly because spaces might be filling up. Or that it's a safe and enjoyable experience, things that a parent would be concerned about. Let's continue on and look at another prompt. In this case, we're saying write a social media post for an upcoming class on financial peace. Now, again, if we go over to the right hand side and see the output, we'll notice that it actually knows quite a bit of what financial peace is. By scouring and harvesting all the content on the Internet, it's determined and knows in its, in its model that financial peace in a Christian environment is about the principles of Dave Ramsey and the basic teachings of budget um, saving and getting out of debt. That's pretty fascinating that it knows all this and that has put it right into your social media post with, without you having to say it. Now, if we go to the next prompt, the next prompt is actually providing the same exact prompt that we saw before. And here we're noticing that each time you provide the prompt, it's going to write back a different result. So it's not like there's a database of all these prompts out there that it's going to. It's actually writing it as you're interacting. And if you don't like uh, the result of a specific prompt, you can provide it again and get an entirely different uh, result. And so in this one, we notice it's actually a little bit longer and it actually put in tokens um, for different parts of the um, content that you might want to change for dates, locations, and even contact information. Our next prompt is uh, asking for three tweets, encouraging someone to register for baptism. So I've said before, every time you submit uh, a prompt, you get a different result, but you don't have to do that continuously. You can actually just ask it for three of them, three different options. Now notice, because we said they're tweets, it's smart enough to know that tweets are actually short and that tweets uh, oftentimes have um, hashtags after them. And so it's even given us some example hashtags uh, that we can go through and, and use. Now, oftentimes, as you're you know, looking through this, these results, it's not the case that you might just take number two and just use it, copy paste. But instead, what's, what's um, wiser is, just, is to take certain pieces from all three and make one uh, that fits exactly what you're looking for. Our next one is to say, write 10 call to action options for a summer camp promotion. 
Now, oftentimes, if you're like me, writing calls to action, sometimes you don't come up with the most catchy ones. So this is a way that you can brainstorm different options. And, and again, you don't have to take one uh, exactly as provided. You can take little bits and pieces from a couple different ones to give you different options. Next up, we can actually have it write longer form content for us. So in this case, we're asking it to write a blog post uh, about coping with depression from a Christian perspective. Now, if you read this entire post, it actually is pretty remarkable what it's come up with. Now, there's a few things that we should probably point out here, and this is a good example of some, of some concerns starting to come into how we use AI. Now, the topic of depression is something that we need to be very careful about. There's two points that we need to worry about. One is the theology that we're giving out. And second of all, when we talk about things like depression, there is actually a medical side of it too. So we have to be cognizant that there's some psychology and medicine that the AI might be trying to recommend. In this case, it hasn't really gone too deep into that. But we have to be very careful that we read through this and make sure that we're not just taking what it provides, but we're using it as a brainstorming tool. Also note, if you look into the, the post uh, in point two, the, the Bible references that it provides is uh, very broad, very uh, wide. So it's recommending full chapters. Now, Psalm 23 in the, in the area of depression, that's a great psalm to recommend to somebody. It's actually one of my favorite psalms, uh, but it's very broad. And if you go further down Isaiah 41, it's recommending full chapters to go read. Uh, something that's you know very broad, and, that, and that's something that you're going to see a lot in AI, is that some of the, the writings that it puts out are very general purpose and not very specific. Now, if we compare and contrast this to an actual blog, blog post that came from a real church's website, you'll notice uh, a few things. One, it's very much more specific, especially in the Bible references. And notice uh, that in, you know, as we're writing Bible references as humans, we typically put in the reference so you can actually read it right there, which is great. Um, so the, the, the Bible references are very specific. It's also providing uh, subtitles, which is very nice. Now, subtitles are pretty easy for AI to add. It'd probably be literally tomorrow that you'll have that as an option. So that's not something to say, well, that's you know, don't use AI because it doesn't do subtitles. But again, it's more the, the point that it's very much more specific when, it, when a human is writing it. But the point here is not necessarily to have AI do all your writing for you. It's to use it as a brainstorming tool. So if I take this example and I, I got back the original uh, blog post that it wrote for me, uh, I might think, well, those uh, scripture references are pretty you know, broad, like we said. I can come back and say, give me 20 Bible verses on depression. Now, now it's given me very specific Bible verses. And ironically, some of these Bible verses are actually from um, the same ones that the, the human written blog post had had. So now I can take these Bible references and I can copy and paste them into the, the original post and start using that original post as more of an outline and, and start editing and, and going through that. And that's really a point within the AI. It's, it's not meant to do all your work for you. It's just to get you started and, and get you some examples and gets you some uh, uh, ability to copy and paste. And that kind of goes back to a saying that we say a lot here at Triumph Tech, it's easier to edit than in create. And so you're basically having AI create a lot of different options for you and allows you to then start editing and putting things together. Our next prompt is write a blog post to encourage someone to give their life to Christ. Now this one is much more theological based, and if you read through it, if you take a minute to pause the video, read through it, it's actually quite good. It gives a lot of the things that, you know, I think uh, if we were to sit down and write this ourselves, we'd put a lot of these same things in. Um, and so again, from a brainstorming perspective, it gives you some of these ideas. You could run this through a few times, get some ideas and kind of pull together some of the stuff that, that you know, maybe you brought to the table, but the, some of the things that it brought up also. But here you have to be careful that you read through this and make sure that the theology does match. So those are some of the basic prompts. If you were to do some YouTube Googling about uh, uh, ChatGPT, those are some of the examples. Let's go a little deeper. Let's level up our prompts and see how we can get even richer uh, types of data back. The first example here is uh, dealing with context. So as you write your prompt, you can actually tell the AI a role. So in this case, I'm saying, you're a pastor of a church. Now, coach me to grow deeper in my faith. So now it's kind of changed the narrative. It's kind of changed the tense that says, hey, as a pastor, I believe. So it's now writing as if it is the pastor. 
This is another good way for it to give you slightly different uh, responses that again, you can use in your final result. Now, uh, if you look through this, there's actually some really great content in here. Again, this model came from real content on the internet. And so it's kind of going through all the content that it feels like matches the type of content that your prompt was and pulling in a lot of the things that those articles had said. So some pretty good information there. You can also use it in brainstorming in a different way. So you can provide it a topic. So the topic I'm saying here is I'm saying, um, I'm writing my prompt basically in two parts. I, I type it all as one thing, but it, I'm giving it two different parts. So first I say topic, how to increase serving in the church. And then I say, for the topic above, brainstorm new angles and approaches. Prioritize ideas that are uncommon or novel. So now here I'm giving the AI the ability to get a little crazy, to get a little bit uh, uh, wild and, and creative with the responses. So our next one has to do with brainstorming. And in this example, we've, we break our prompt into two different parts. So first I'm going to say topic, how to increase serving in the church. And then I'll continue on and say, for the topic above, brainstorm new angles or approaches. Prioritize ideas that are uncommon or novel. So in this case, I've given the AI the ability and permission to get creative, to think of things that maybe aren't commonly found in its model, but maybe are on the fringe. Uh, and this is a great way to brainstorm. So for item number two, create a service auction where members can bid on different opportunities to serve with the proceeds going towards a charitable cause. Now that definitely is novel and perhaps uncommon, and it might not be that you would use option number two uh, directly, but it might give you a different uh, idea about having a, an auction of some type for, for serving. And uh, so again, this is a great way to, to use it as a brainstorming uh, tool uh, for you to create new ideas uh, for serving. As another brainstorming prompt, we're going to ask for three different objections some, that someone might have to becoming a Christian. So as we write, we often want to talk, think through what objections someone might have to what we're writing. Well, in this case, we can just ask the AI to generate for us. Now, these three objections are probably nothing novel and nothing new, uh, but it does help us kind of think through different uh, sides as we're writing. And you don't have to limit it to three. You could say, give me 20 objections. And by the time you go through all 20, I'm sure there's some that you wouldn't have thought of. Now, in this case, we can continue on with our brainstorming and say, let's take one of those objections. It was being judged by others. So now you can take that one and say, hey, I want to dig deep deeper into that concept. What are some ways to help someone overcome the fear of being judged when they're, being cons uh, when they're considering becoming a Christian? Now, there's actually some pretty interesting ideas in here. I like number five, pray with and for the person. In terms of bringing down barriers, actually praying with that person in that moment is a great way to bring down those barriers and really kind of make that more of an intimate moment. That's, one of the, that's an idea I'm not sure I would have had if I were to sit down with a blank piece of paper and, and try to come up with these ideas. So again, a great example of the AI really providing a richness and fullness uh, to your brainstorming experience. Now, this one's a little bit different. So sometimes creating prompts is a little bit difficult. So in this case, I'm writing a prompt that's actually going to generate a prompt that I can use later. So let's let's dig in. So here I'm saying analyze the text below for style, voice and tone using NLP. So that stands for natural language processing. Don't need to know that. Just copy and paste it in. Create a prompt to write a new article in the same style, voice and tone. And then the small text below, that's just a, a text I got from a blog post I had written. I just pasted it in there, just made it small to fit on the screen. So what this does is it's actually going to return back to me a prompt that I can use in the future to write an article discussing the importance of project management tools in the workplace and how they can transform the way we work using the style, tone, and voice of the provided text. Uh, and then I provide uh, the text again. And so that, and that would be the same text I put into the prompt. And that will allow me to write an article in the future about a different topic, but it'll use the same style, voice, and tone uh, that I provided in the first prompt. But two layers to this. One is that you can write a prompt that can help you um, determine a good prompt that you're looking for. So maybe you're kind of stuck on how to write a prompt. We'll just ask the AI to, how should I write a prompt to get this type of, of information? And it will do it for you. Second of all, this example shows that you can use um, 
previously written text on a totally different topic to write it a paper that matches the same style and tone of that of that same content. So uh, pretty interesting. You can also use it to get summarization. So if I wanted to say, give me a short summary of the course concept of the book Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, it'll actually provide me uh, a short description of the book. Now I can actually come back and say, give me a five paragraph summary of this book and it would provide a more, a longer uh, form uh, summary of the book. And you're not necessarily limited to just, uh, you know, older open source books. You can actually take some of the, uh, the best sellers today and it'll actually give you a summary of that text too. Now, it, the way it creates that summary is it doesn't have necessarily access to the full text of some of these new books, but it does have access to a lot of summaries about those books. So you're basically getting a summarization based off of summarizations. You can also use ChatGPT to do more creative types of things. So in this case, I'm saying write a poem about leading someone to Christ. Now, it could be that I want this poem because I need it for uh, a blog post, or it could be just a creative way of trying to get some, you know, verbiage or some, uh, you know, specific word choices that you want, or as a maybe another brainstorming tool. Now, this is not poetry that's going to necessarily win a, a prize maybe today, but it actually is not too bad. Um, you know, maybe stanza three, we speak of his great love and all that he has done. We tell of his forgiveness and the new life he has won. Probably better poetry than I could write. So again, you might use this for maybe kids ministry. You could use this for a sermon illustration. Um, and again, if you don't like this poem, just provide the same prompt again. You'll get a different poem and you can keep doing that until you find something that you like. You can also use ChatGPT as a replacement for search engines. So typically, if I wanted to find out what's, what were some popular songs from the 80s, I might turn to Google, but I don't have to. I can actually use this new tool and it can act as somewhat of a search engine. So in this case, it has returned to me uh, some popular songs from uh, the 80s. And uh, from there, I can continue on with the creativity prompt and say, uh, rewrite the lyrics to Don't Stop Believing to be about Jesus. Again, Journey probably doesn't have anything to worry, but it's actually pretty fun and interesting. Um, I, I really like the Jesus Savior. Like you can kind of hear that in your head, the, the way the lyrics are supposed to go with that. And there's actually some pretty clever things that you can do. Again, if you don't like the lyrics, sometimes uh, I've found that the lyrics it writes, I get half of it will be the, the original lyrics. But if you just send the prompt back through again, you'll get something um, really different. Now, so far we've looked at what's possible today, but what's kind of coming in the future? One of the industry leaders, as recently as December 24, 2002, said that GPT-4, which is the next version of GPT, will be out soon and will probably cause a similar economic shock to the one from COVID. Instant distribution with near instant adoption and nearly instant productivity increases for hundreds of millions of knowledge workers. Brace yourself, 2023 is coming. So that's pretty amazing that what it can already do, but if we look in towards the future, we're just getting started. So how should we view the role of AI in ministry? Many people might be tempted to outsource their work to AI. For some professionals, this might be acceptable, but we don't believe that's what God has in mind for ministry for several reasons. First, it removes the human component from the Great Commission. Jesus commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations, not go and make AI, which will then go make disciples for all nations. Secondly, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, we're told that humans are to have dominion over creation. We should not relinquish this authority and simply outsource our roles. From a larger perspective, if humanity doesn't carefully consider the role of AI, we could be building the next Tower of Babel. In the story, we see man's hubris for its own creation. If we say to each other, come and let us build AI that will empower us to reach towards the heavens, I don't think that's going to go too well for us. There's also the concept of corruption. Consider this quote from the book Dune. Once men turned their thinking over to machines in the hope that this would set them free, but that only permitted other men with machines to enslave them. Seems rather prophetic, doesn't it? There's a danger in putting too much blind reliance in AI for ministry. If there's one thing we've seen over the last year is the ease at which evil can corrupt online platforms and technology to sway large groups of people. It's also important to realize that this technology is not infallible. In fact, it can make very big mistakes. Take this prompt, for example. 
Here I ask, are there more than 40 days in a month? And its response is, there are more than 40 days in some months, but not all months have more than 40 days. The number of days in a month can vary between 28 and 31, which are all under 40. And then it goes on to tell me how many days there are in each month, and not one of those months has more than 40 days. And then continues on to tell me about leap year, which I didn't even ask about. So not only can AI be wrong in occasions, but it can be confidently wrong in many occasions. We also have to consider the bias and worldview of the model that's created. So in this prompt I ask, is Jesus the only way to salvation? And because its model has been made off the entire internet, its worldview doesn't match our worldview. So in this case it says, well that's what some people believe, but that's not what other people believe. So again, how we use this within ministry, we have to be very careful that we understand its bias and its worldview. Finally, we have something that AI will never have, a soul. As we work in ministry, the Holy Spirit works through us. That inspiration and wisdom is not something that AI will ever be able to replace. So how should we view AI in the context of ministry? It's best viewed as a powerful tool, a brainstorming or research assistant that we can interact with as we go through our day. In one sense, you can think about it as the world's most powerful thesaurus, one that takes our original work and thoughts and makes them fuller and richer. As an example, ChatGPT was instrumental in the creation of this video. Even something as simple as coming up with a title was assisted by AI. My original title was Using AI in Ministry. By putting in a prompt and getting back responses, this was polished to number nine, revolutionizing the way we do ministry. Perfect YouTube clickbait. This video is just a small dip into the world of AI. There's so much more we can talk about. For instance, we're currently working on a similar video about AI and the generation of images. In fact, all the images in this presentation were generated by AI specifically for this presentation. Look for this in the near future. At Triumph, we love partnering with churches to use the latest technology to empower ministry. Much of this work is through RockRMS, an innovation platform for churches. You can easily get started with RockRMS by using our fully managed Rock solution called RockCloud. Our hosted solution is not a simple install of Rock. It uses all of our best practices that we've gleaned over the years working with churches. For more content like this, be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us on Twitter at Triumph M Tech, M stands for ministry, and also Facebook at Triumph M Tech. If you want more content that I personally put out on a weekly basis, you can follow me on Twitter at John Edmiston. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you find it helpful.